10. The Face Mite Mating Frenzy Let's begin with a horror story that is happening on your face right now, specifically in the roots of your eyelashes. While you navigate the dream world, your face becomes the venue for a microscopic orgy. You are the host to a tiny arachnid known as Demodex folliculorum. These are eight-legged cigar-shaped mites that are distantly related to spiders and ticks, and they live inside your hair follicles. During the day, they are shy. They stay buried head down inside the pore, feeding on your oils and dead skin cells. But they are photophobic. They hate light. So when you turn off the bedside lamp and drift into unconsciousness, they take that as the signal to commute. They crawl out of your pores, using their eight stubby legs to march across your nose, forehead, and cheeks at a speed of about a few centimeters per hour. To them, your face is a vast, dark continent. And they aren't just going for a stroll, they are looking for a mate. The male mites seek out the female mites on the surface of your skin to copulate. Once the deed is done, the female crawls back into a pore to lay her eggs inside your skin, where the hatchlings will eventually eat their way out to join the colony. This sounds like a pathological infestation, something you should rush to a dermatologist to cure, but it isn't. It is the baseline human condition. Almost every adult human on Earth hosts these mites. They are a part of your facial microbiome. And in a twisted way, they are keeping you alive, or at least keeping your skin manageable, by consuming the excess sebum, oil, that would otherwise clog your pores and cause massive cystic breakouts. They are tiny biological vacuum cleaners that work the night shift. The cost of this service? You have to let them use your face as a breeding ground every single night. If you wipe your face before bed, you aren't removing them, you're just annoying them. They are deep in the follicle, waiting for you to sleep so they can come out and play. 9. Synaptic Self-Cannibalism While the mites are partying on your skin, something arguably more disturbing is happening inside your skull. We often think of sleep as a time of rest, but for the brain, it is a time of destructive renovation. There is a biological process called synaptic pruning, and it essentially involves your brain eating parts of itself. During the day, as you learn new things, navigate traffic, and scroll through social media, your neurons form billions of new connections, or synapses. It's like a forest growing wildly out of control. If this growth went unchecked, your brain would become a noisy, overwired mess, prone to seizures and incapable of retaining important information because the signal would be lost in the noise of useless trivia. You cannot store everything. To survive, you must destroy. Enter the microglia. These are specialized immune cells that act as the brain's gardeners, or perhaps more accurately, its executioners. When you enter deep sleep, these cells become hyperactive. They patrol your neural pathways looking for weak, unused, or unimportant synaptic connections. When they find one, say, the memory of what you had for lunch three Tuesdays ago, they engulf it and digest it. They physically eat the connection. This is phagocytosis on a neural level. This isn't just waste removal, it is structural remodeling. You are waking up with a physically different brain than the one you went to sleep with. Parts of your personality, your memories, and your experiences are being dissolved in acid every night. It's a necessary sacrifice. By eating the noise, the microglia ensure that the signal, the important memories you need to keep, is strengthened. You are literally sacrificing pieces of your mind to save the whole. If this cannibalistic process didn't happen, your brain would run out of energy and storage space within days, leading to cognitive collapse. So, sweet dreams, your brain is currently devouring your past to secure your future. 8. The Cerebral Wash Power Let's get straight to the point of waste management. You probably assume that when you drift off to sleep, your body just shuts down like a laptop closing its lid. Cute thought, but completely wrong. 
The second you lose consciousness, your brain initiates a full-scale industrial cleaning operation that is honestly kind of disturbing. It's called the glymphatic system. Yeah, fancy word, but the mechanism is brute force plumbing. Here's what happens. Your brain cells, specifically the glial cells, literally shrink in size by about 60%. Seriously, they shrivel up. Why? To create massive cavities between the neurons so that your skull can be flooded with cerebrospinal fluid, CSF. This clear, salty goo rushes through your brain tissue like a high-pressure hose, washing away toxic waste proteins called beta amyloids that build up while you're awake. Think of it as taking out the trash, but the trash is inside your head and the garbage truck is a wave of spinal fluid. Beta amyloids are metabolic waste. They are the sticky plaque that, if left to accumulate, is strongly linked to Alzheimer's disease. If you don't sleep, this brain sewage stays put, clogging up your neurons like gum in a computer fan. So when you wake up feeling groggy after an all-nighter, it's basically because your brain didn't finish its laundry cycle. You are walking around with a head full of dirty biological waste, which explains why you can't remember where you put your keys or why your emotional regulation is shot. This power wash is a violent, high-volume fluid exchange. Your brain cycles through its entire volume of CSF multiple times a night. It is a hydraulic cleaning system that only activates when the conscious mind is offline because the process is too energy intensive to run while you are thinking. You effectively have to die to the world so your brain can flush the toilet. 7. The Chemical Straitjacket Let's talk about the fact that every night your body puts you in a genuine medical grade chemical straitjacket. It's called REM atonia and it is the only reason you haven't accidentally walked out a window while dreaming about flying. When you hit rapid eye movement or REM sleep, the phase where vivid dreaming occurs, your brainstem, specifically the pons, sends a powerful inhibitory signal down your spinal cord. This signal floods your motor neurons with neurotransmitters like glycine and GABA or gamma-aminobutyric acid. These chemicals effectively sever the connection between your brain and your voluntary muscles. You are paralyzed, stone cold stuck. Your brain is shouting commands, run from the monster, fly, fight, but the phone line to your muscles has been cut. Why? Because if you weren't paralyzed, you would physically act out every bizarre scenario your subconscious cooks up. This is a survival mechanism known as REM behavior disorder when it fails. People without this chemical lock have been known to tackle furniture, punch their spouses, or dive out of bed thinking they're in mortal combat. But here is the fun part. Sometimes the system glitches in the other direction. The off switch gets stuck. You wake up mentally, your consciousness reboots, but your body is still under the influence of the paralytic chemicals. This is sleep paralysis. Your eyes are open, you are fully conscious, you can see the room, but you cannot twitch a single muscle. You are trapped in a corpse. Your panic brain, trying to make sense of why you are frozen and why your chest feels heavy because your breathing muscles are also suppressed, often hallucinates a shadow figure or a demon sitting on your chest. This is the night hag syndrome reported across cultures for millennia. So, thanks evolution. You either stay paralyzed and safe or you wake up to a personal horror movie where you are a prisoner in your own flesh. Let's address the fact that every night you effectively transform into a molting reptile. While your conscious mind is in la-la land, your epidermis enters a hyperactive regeneration phase to repair the damage from UV rays, pollution, and friction you encounter during the day. Cell mitosis peaks around midnight, meaning your body is frantically pushing off old dead cells to make room for fresh ones. You shed roughly 30,000 to 40,000 skin cells every single minute, do the math. Over an eight-hour snooze, you dump nearly two million flakes of dead flesh directly into your sheets. You are literally marinating in a microscopic pile of your own decay.
If you sleep in the same sheets for two weeks, you are essentially sleeping in a gravel pit of human dust. But wait, it gets worse. You aren't just shedding, you are feeding the troops. Your mattress is home to millions of dust mites, dermatophygoides. These are tiny eight-legged relatives of spiders, yes, more arachnids, that think your dead skin is a five-star Michelin meal. They don't bite you, they don't suck your blood, they just graze on the biological snowdrift you leave behind on your pillow. These invisible scavengers eat your dead skin, digest it, and then defecate it out. A single dust mite produces about 20 droppings a day. Multiply that by millions. If your mattress feels heavier than when you bought it 10 years ago, that isn't humidity. That is a decade's worth of accumulated dead skin and mite excrement packed inside the fabric. You think you sleep alone, but you are actually the host of a nightly all-you-can-eat buffet, and your shedding phase is the main course. The allergic reactions people have to dust? You aren't allergic to the mites. You are allergic to a protein in their feces. You are inhaling mite poop all night. Sweet dreams. Let's discuss a reality your significant other knows all too well, but you blissfully ignore. You are a nocturnal gas factory. During the day, you possess a wonderful thing called voluntary muscle control. You feel a bubble of trouble in your gut, you clench, you wait for a socially appropriate moment, you hold the line. But when you hit deep sleep, that guard comes down. Specifically, the internal anal sphincter, the autonomic gatekeeper of your dignity, relaxes. It doesn't let go completely, thankfully, but it loosens enough to let pressurized gas escape without resistance. Furthermore, the peristaltic movements of your colon change rhythm, often pushing gas toward the exit more efficiently than when you were standing up. Most people pass gas far more frequently while asleep because gravity isn't fighting the bubbles and your social anxiety is offline. But here is the wild part. You never wake yourself up with the smell. Why? Because your sense of smell effectively deactivates during REM sleep. Your brain decides processing odors isn't a priority compared to processing memories. This is a dangerous evolutionary quirk. It's why smoke detectors are necessary, because smoke won't wake you up. But in this context, it's a mercy. This means you can lie there creating a methane cloud under the duvet, totally oblivious. You are safe from the stench, but anyone sharing the bed is trapped in a Dutch oven of your making. It is a biological necessity to prevent bloating and intestinal cramping. If you didn't release this pressure, you'd wake up in pain. Sure, it's survival, but let's be honest, it is also a nightly betrayal of intimacy. The personal sauna. You might think you sleep dry, especially if you blast the AC, but your body has other plans. Every night, you are secretly leaking. It's called nocturnal perspiration, and it's your body's desperate attempt to not overheat and cook your internal organs. While you dream, your circadian rhythm dictates that your core body temperature must drop to its lowest point, usually around 3 or 4 a.m., to conserve energy and facilitate cellular repair. To make that thermal drop happen, your body has to dump heat, and the most efficient way to dump heat is evaporative cooling, so you pump out sweat. On an average night, you excrete about a cup of liquid, roughly 200 to 300 milliliters. That might not sound like much, but do the math over a year. You're sweating out nearly 25 gallons of salty water directly into your bedding. That's essentially a bathtub full of sweat every single year, absorbed right into the fabric of your mattress and pillows. Remember those dust mites we talked about in point six? They need water to survive. They don't drink from a glass. They absorb moisture from the air. Your sweat creates a humid, fungal paradise deep inside your bed that allows them to thrive. It also promotes the growth of mold and bacteria within the foam of your pillow. So when you wake up and flip the pillow to the cool side, just remember it isn't fresh air making it cold, it's dampness. You are fermenting in your own juices to ensure your liver doesn't overheat. It's a vital survival mechanism, sure, but it means your bed is basically a giant used sponge. Let's talk about the slime puddle. You know the one. You wake up, lift your head, and there is a cold, wet patch on the pillowcase that connects to the corner of your mouth by a single shimmering string of saliva. Gross. But congratulations, your body is working correctly. This is actually a critical safety feature. 
When you're awake, you swallow constantly, about once every minute, to manage saliva production. But in deep sleep, your swallowing reflex relaxes, just like the rest of your muscles. If you sleep on your side or stomach, gravity takes over. The saliva pools in your cheek and spills out, instead of going down the hatch. But why do we make so much slime, even when we aren't eating? It protects you. That saliva is loaded with antibodies, like IgA, and enzymes, like lysozyme, that fight off bacteria. Your mouth is the primary entry point for pathogens. While you sleep, bacteria populations in your mouth explode, which is why morning breath smells like death. The drool is your body's attempt to flush this bacterial colony out. Furthermore, saliva keeps your throat and oral tissues moist. If they dry out, they crack. Micro cracks in your throat are superhighways for viruses to enter your bloodstream. Basically, your mouth is a petri dish and the drool is the sanitizer. If you stopped producing it, a condition called xerostomia, your teeth would rot faster, your gums would recede, and you'd be prone to massive throat infections. So that embarrassing wet spot isn't just gross. It is evidence that your immune system is holding the line against mouth rot. It is not dignified, but survival rarely is. Two. The Midnight Snot Cocktail You probably think your nose takes a break when you close your eyes, but unfortunately, the mucus factory never shuts down. In fact, the mechanics of it change in a way that turns your stomach into a waste disposal unit. Your nasal passages are lined with mucus membranes and millions of microscopic hairs called cilia. These little guys work like a synchronized rowing team, beating in waves to push mucus toward the back of your throat. This sticky slime is essentially biological flypaper designed to trap dust, pollen, fungal spores, and bacteria before they can infect your lungs. Here is the stomach-turning part. You produce and swallow roughly one quart, almost a liter, of nasal mucus every 24 hours. A huge portion of that snot cocktail is consumed while you sleep. Because you are horizontal, gravity helps the sludge slide from the back of your nose down into the pharynx, a process called post-nasal drip. You don't even notice it because you're unconscious. Your body treats your stomach like a waste incinerator. It knows that the mucus is full of trapped pathogens, so it dumps the infected slime into the hydrochloric acid bath of your stomach to kill the germs. While you dream of pizza, your body is force-feeding you a liter of your own filtered waste. If this flow stopped, that bacteria-laden mucus would pool in your sinuses or drip into your lungs, causing pneumonia or severe sinus infections. You are drinking your own snot to keep your lungs sterile. It is a closed-loop recycling system from hell. The Eye Trash Compactor Finally, let's talk about the very first thing you pick off your face in the morning, that crunchy grit in the corner of your eye. You might call it sleep sand, crusties, or gunk. Scientists call it room, and it is essentially a waste brick. During the day, you blink constantly, about 15 to 20 times a minute. This blinking action works like a windshield wiper, washing away dust, exfoliated cells, protein, and oil with a fresh coat of tears. The debris is washed into the tear ducts and swallowed. Yes, you eat your eye gunk too during the day. But when you sleep, the blinking stops. The cleaning crew goes on strike. However, the production of mabum, an oily substance that prevents tears from evaporating, does not stop. Without the windshield wipers moving, this oil mixes with dead skin cells, dust, and bacteria that land on your lash line. Your body naturally pushes this debris to the inner corner of the eye, the canthus, where it accumulates. Because your body heat evaporates the watery part of the tears, this sludge dries out and hardens. What you are picking out in the morning is a hardened cocktail of blood cells, skin, oil, and bacteria. It is literally a waste compactor. If this didn't happen, that grit would float around your cornea, scratching your eyes while they dart around during REM sleep, rapid eye movement. A scratched cornea is a recipe for blindness. So, waking up crusty is actually a sign of a successful filtration process. You are basically a self-cleaning oven, and that grit is the ash. You survived another night of sweating, shedding, leaking fluids, and eating snot just to stay alive. It isn't pretty, but it beats the alternative. Now go wash your face. You look terrible.